Hello friends, welcome back to another episode. This is Rob, Room 111. So in this episode, I'm going to show you around the Minolta uh, Pocket Pack 440EX. So let me open it. So here we have here the uh, user manual. Okay. And I'm going to open it to the t spec sheet in case you want to go ahead and copy that. Grab a sc uh, screen grab. So let me show you around the camera. It's a wonderful camera. So this is just the intro. This is from about 1975-1976. And what happened is uh, this was uh, the answer to Kodak's uh, Ectralight and Pocket Instamatic line of cameras. Right? This is very upscale. This is tremendous workmanship and build quality on this camera. So what it is, Canon also made the 110E and ED and so Minolta and Canon were trying to be like an upscale version of the Kodak. So let me walk around the camera. So this is the this is the lamp that uh, lets you know that the, the flash is charging. This is a, its camera takes one single AA battery. You can see it in there, it's just one AA. Let me close this. Okay, this is the film door. So what you do here is you just pull this slider to the right and then simultaneously pull down. So there's your film chamber in there in the back end of the of the lens. <clears throat> it's the viewfinder. It's got a wonderful viewfinder with frame lines. So there are frame lines in there to show you your composition. Here is three settings. Let me get in focus. So here's the head and shoulders portrait. One click over is full body that would be for a full body head to toe and then one more is a mountain which stands for like uh, landscapes right you might uh, focus out to infinity here is um, the sun obviously would be under sunny conditions like it's a sunny sunny uh, conditions bright sky and then here is a flash and you'll see here look what happens to the flash module it go ahead you can hear it you can hear that whine, the battery is charging. And this illuminates too, so when you pop the flash, this illuminates, so if you're outdoors at night, right, it's very difficult to see. You can see what you have your camera set in. So the first two settings here, you can use it in conjunction with, a, so here's how to show you how to activate the camera, basically. This, this allows you to fire the camera. If this is closed, you can't fire the shutter. So you open this, and if again, if you're in, a head and shoulders portrait or the next one over full body you can take there's a little tiny tab here and you pull out that tab and watch what happens here to this little red flag it allow it lets you know that the see how that popped out you can see it through your viewfinder it lets you know that the close-up lens is engaged so you slide it now watch what happens to the red flag when I push it in you see that little red flag went back in so it's not visible in the viewfinder so it's just a little safety mechanism to let you know that you have that uh, engaged okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just close the flash I'm not gonna fire it but it does work and also notice this too this is really important this camera is about 43 years old and look at the uh, flash element it hasn't yellowed all the Kodaks are very very badly yellowed after all these years Right, so what, what happens is when the flash fires and hits your subject, that deep yellow, it's about 3,000 Kelvin, and it's going to turn your subject a very nasty yellow. But this here, this is still clear. I, can't, I really can't believe this. 43 years later, this is still the day it came out of the factory, 5,500 Kelvin. So when your flash hits your subject, it's going to be a natural light. It's going to be a natural 5,500 daylight balance flash on your subject which is incredibly useful. I, I just I can't get over that this is not yellowed. So anyways, I'm just going to close this back up. So that kind of powers down the camera. It really doesn't power it down, but you just it, it, it locks the shutter. So this is the shutter. We covered these, what these do. And here, this is what uh, you use to advance the film. So and I'll show you here. I neglected to show you this is what the, the cartridge looks like. I just This is what I shot right so this is empty I developed my own film at home so you'll see there's no film and there's no backing paper because I, I took it out and I developed this maybe about four or five hours ago so this this is just a hull but this is what the film right this is a 110 film cartridge and I wanted to show you also what differentiates this from a Kodak and some of the lower end models is the if you can see down in here the teeth see those teeth down in here this is what advances the film. 
it engages let me get focus here it's very difficult to focus but it engages here that's the sprocket so these teeth engage the 110 film see that they line up and that's what advances your film but my point is the codex, the lower entry codex, are plastic sprockets. And these teeth, this whole entire sprocket down in here is metal. It's made out of metal, which is extremely, extremely high end. Okay. So again, I just can't uh, rave about this camera enough. This is so solid. And another thing, too, is the fit and finish of this camera is wonderful. Absolutely tremendous. It's really got an upscale feel to it. And, and it feels like there's a chassis underneath here. This isn't all plastic. It feels like underneath here... There's either a magnesium or an aluminum chassis that all these exterior panels are fixed to. But that's what it feels like because the camera is so solid. It feels like there's a metal chassis riding underneath here. So again, I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you that I can't recommend this camera enough. It's a wonderful camera. Oh, and the specs. I did forget real quickly that the shutter, the shutter is a fixed 1 over 200. And the aperture is also a fixed f5.6 if you want to know the tech specs of your shutter and aperture. Okay, so I'll roll in the images now. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.